Welcome to Turning Tuesday. This week I'm featuring a purple heart rollerball that is a birthday present. I will cover mistakes, malfunctions, and ultimately success. The footage will include going from mandrel to turning between centers, as well as returning when the finish did not succeed and finishing it off, as well as extensive footage of the assembly process. Please enjoy. Starting off, I sharpen the tools and get ready to turn. The sharp tool cuts smoothly. Kicking off early. If you're liking the content that I'm putting out, please like and subscribe. Now in this footage, you may notice that the uh, center there has quite a bit of wobble. I didn't notice it so much first. And it wasn't until I put the finish on that I realized something was very wrong. My mandrel is actually warped. On the right we've got the pen lid, on the left we've got the pen body. And right here, I dug a little too deep and I immediately regretted it. I just got a little catch there, wasn't happy about that, I knew something wasn't right so I stopped the machine. You may notice that in there is a nice missing chunk. So I take it off, I throw that blank in my pen jaws, I turn it away, make it a little bit shorter, it works, it's not something I enjoy doing, but sometimes you've got to. As you may have noticed, we're almost there to round, but again, you can really see that wobble as I rotate it. So moving into the sanding, at this stage I still think all is fine. I do my typical 150 through to 600. At each step, I stop and do a left to right, going with the grain so that the circular scratches disappear. Now I'm bringing out the purple by taking a flame to it. So satisfying just watching that purple really start to shine. Jump over and over to the finish and that purple really starts to shine. Very exciting. I love this section. I'm using Bob Smith Industry Thin CA here. Which in Australia we call super glue. In my other videos, I'd fast forwarded through the waiting portions. I'm not today. 
I'm just going to jump cut straight to the next one. I also took out a few layers. But typically I'll do four to five layers of the thin and then I'll do one to two of medium. Once that's done, we move on to the micro mesh system. I run my micro mesh at 1200 RPM. I use the most coarse one initially a bit longer than I should, but what I do is I get the rough spots down. I get it so that they're almost not there, and then I can move on to the further grits. This one, I actually came back for three passes. The third pass, I realized that the lid had sanded through. It was the lid that I also noticed that I had quite a distortion. Notice there was still a little bit of a hole there, which was collecting the white plastic of the CA. Decided to give it a quick hit. Notice the hole was mostly gone, and so I moved on. You may notice I touch it first and then I come back and do a second attachment. What I'm doing there is I'm adding moisture because if you don't you're releasing plastic into the wild. It also heats it up and can ruin the finish. So first thing I do is I make it wet and then I come back with a freshly wet micro mesh. So at the end of that clip you would have seen on the lid some discoloration and that's because the finish has detached from the pen and I've sanded through a little bit. It'll become a lot more noticeable here. Yeah, so there we go. You can really see that there. Just pointing at it, having a look, and I've decided the bottom of the pen has come out perfect, so I'm going to change my method. Now, you may notice here I've switched to turning between centers, and this is interesting because you can really see just how warped the finish was as well as the actual pen. That was, of course, from the mandrel being off-center. I'm just taking the tool back, scraping away all that finish, taking back a little bit of the wood. And then I will move into sanding and get this finished. So I got 90% of the finish off and then I took the sandpaper to it again. I went the whole way through the range to try and get as much of it off as I could. The good news of this is it had still soaked in a little bit so below where I was sanding was still a little bit of the super glue and it didn't affect the finish at all. You 
You may notice the purple's actually coming out a lot faster here. I suspect that's because I'd already released the oils when I took the torch to it originally. I also didn't take it quite as far with the purple as the base. As I've discussed in my previous videos, Purple Heart will get more purple over time, to the point where it will eventually turn black. That usually happens over decades and not overly quickly. Let's load the speed down and applying the finish. Cut out a few processes of applying the glue there and moving into the micro mesh. Now, this finish actually came out quite lovely to begin with, so it actually came out quite beautiful. As someone who makes things mostly from scratch, yes, I'm using a kit here, but the actual process itself is by hand. So, while making things by hand, I understand there is a level of mistakes that are going to occur. I accept that. Doesn't mean I like it. I would prefer everything that comes out be absolutely perfect. But that's not always the case. And sometimes it adds to the character of the finished product. And this lid came out absolutely stunning. Moving into the assembly now, you may notice that I've got two different camera angles here. Just playing around with some of the settings and trying to figure out which bit is width. So on the pen body, there is a different width at the base and the tip. So trying to remember which one was which was what I was just doing there. Just comparing it against the covers what I'm doing now is taking any rough edges around the pen itself, so the finish, making sure it comes up smooth. You don't want any overhanging bits as it could crack and peel the finish away from the wood. I decided to turn the pen around there because I realized that the broader base was going to work better as the black piece of the pen press actually has a hole in the center of it. Didn't have much of a choice here, so I switched over to the other camera. I used to get a close look on that getting pressed together. You'll notice I gave it a little wiggle there just to get it to go straight. Screwing the base on, putting the spring in, putting the main pen body in, and attaching the nib. Going through the sanding process again, just getting rid of that. So what I do is I give that a quick sand until it's mostly smooth, and then I get rid of any of the loose stuff against my pants. Don't tell my wife, she may yell at me. 
So when I have a look at that and notice that we're good, I move on to pressing. The lid is significantly more broad than what the body is, making sense as it has to screw over the top of it. So the lid of this pen actually has a black circle. It's not flat. So what I do here is I put that black point in the center of the hole on the black. Now, if you haven't taken the chance, I would request that you like, comment, and subscribe. If you've found this is something you've really enjoyed, please share this with people you know, and I hope you enjoy the photos.